Hey everybody, it's me, Requiem, back again with another Beyblade unboxing video. Today's unboxing is actually a triple unboxing, and a very big one, might I add. Because today, what I have with me is Roar Bahamut, Chain Kerbius, and Win Knight. Uh, I recently spent a lot of time saving up in order to afford them from confirmed sellers. So, I got awesome stuff for this video. Well, I figure to start off, I'm going to do one of the two here. Uh, these are from the same seller of Kerbeus and Knight. They were in a bundle. And sure enough, they're legit. So I'm going to start off with, well, Kerbeus first, because it has the least amount of stickers. Not that I plan to put them on anyways. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, I received these way earlier than eBay said the selling or the shipping would take. It said anywhere from October 31st to November 8th. Instead, I received these today, which I believe was October 21st or 20th. I don't know. I figured a big October unboxing would be fun. Well, that sure isn't hiding how obvious it is. My god, it's like the airtight sealed the Kerbius. Sure enough, here it is in all its glory. Shane Kerbeus. Oh, it has the six armor. I forgot about that. But the main reason that this one appealed to me is the Kerbeus core with its rubber stops for clockwise chip, clockwise spinning Beyblades. That, and I was curious towards the new Forge disc, which I believe is called Fortress, which is a pretty cool name, I'd say. Kind of odd that we didn't get this name earlier with other parts, but it makes sense. Or at least it's a good name. Honestly, it would probably be funny to put that on the Emperor Fornius Bay. Emperor Fornius Fortress. I wonder if there's a driver that <laughs> rhymes with that. Oh, that'd be funny. Just trying to remember. Right now, my main priority is getting this out without having anything to cut it open with. Because I was stupid and forgot to bring my knife with me to record this. So, not the most entertaining content, I'll admit. Ah, oh, there we go, finally, I got a hole started. Uh, if I remember correctly, Fortress is very similar to the Giga Disc. In shape, anyways. Like, look at this, this is very much like Giga. Though it might be slightly less or more heavy, I'm not sure entirely. Now let's see. Oh, I there isn't even stars on this one. Interesting. Usually there's like a zero, one, two, three, or four, or one, two, three, or four stars, which helps determine rep uh, duplicate parts. Helps remember which go to which, except this one has zero on it, ironically, or oddly. I've never seen a zero star disc before. Maybe I have, I just don't remember. Uh, though it is really neat. Now for the pain, the absolute most painful part, trying to get this driver out. Oh my god, there's more tape than there is sense. If I remember correctly, the driver is Yard Dash, or maybe Yard Metal. I don't remember exactly which one it is, but uh, I know it's not anything special. But it is a new part, nonetheless. At least I think that's how you say that. But nonetheless, nevertheless, I don't care. But a new driver is a new driver. Honestly, I'm just surprised I'm getting as far as I am as quickly. It's only like four minutes and I'm already close to opening the first one entirely. Ah, it's Yard Dash. I see the red of the chip. Yep, Yard Dash. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be meta, but I do have to say this ball feels kind of loose, not bad. So now let's assemble Chain Kerbius. Oh my god, this is tight as hell. Is this thing going to assemble? Am I just doing it wrong?
Hmm. Oh yeah, and of course there's no teeth on it. It's literally just the rubber to lock it in. Perhaps I'm just clueless towards the assembly. I am struggling to assemble this thing. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard. I actually forgot to go over some details before I went into this, actually. Uh, the 6 armor is a brand new armor, I think. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it first released on Curbeus here. Curbeus? Curbeus? I don't know. Uh, the chip is honestly really cool, in my opinion, having a clockwise chip that has rubber stoppers. And I'm not sure if any of you remember Season 4 of Burst, but it had the, uh, well, Tact Longinus, which had the ability where these little blades move depending on which layer weight it had in it. They would go out depending on which ones poked the protrusion. Well, the same applies for this bay, actually. In high mode, actually, oh, yeah, uh, in high mode, depending on which armor puts in, the blades will poke out or just be loose like it is now. Uh, but the six armor just stays loose on all of them. I'm pretty sure. Let me try that again. Yeah, all of them stay loose. And I'm pretty sure it's the same for any core you put on, though I might be mistaken. But, uh, very cool ability. I just need to figure out how the hell I assemble this thing. Because the rubber is very... There we go. Very tight. Oh my god, Chain Kirbyus is a tank. This thing is solid. I like this. And I will do some test launches, maybe a few test battles. Not sure yet. I'm going to set the stickers aside for now for collector purposes. Now for the next bay. Roar Bahamut. I actually found a surprisingly good deal on this on eBay. Honestly, the average price for it right now on eBay is like $100. But I was lucky enough to find it for 75 And sure enough, here it is. It is Roar Bahamut 10 armor. And if I remember correctly, it has the Metal Disc Giga and a new driver called Moment. So I'm going to start off with trying to get the Giga disc out. Giga is one of the more top tier discs, I'd say. It's not quite as good as Over is, but... It's definitely a solid use as a secondary if you don't have over. It's also mediocre, or not mediocre, but really good on attack combos, which is nice. So having extra Giga Discs is always fine by me. I already have like two, maybe three of them. So now I have either three or four. Also, let's see how many stars are on this one. Does it even stick? Okay, yeah, they do still they still do stars. There's one star on this. Not bad. Also, uh, if you don't know Bahamut, it's been in the series since like season two. I'm pretty sure. Uh so let's see, how does this work? Cause I am curious, how was the system? Okay, so when it's at zero clicks it's uh, kind of a oval shape, but as it gets closer to bursting, uh, it takes a more circular shape, apparently. Or it's supposed to. Honestly, not sure. Uh, yeah, that pretty much is the whole ability. That's been its ability since it's the first one came out in Season 2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The original Bahamut came in the Beyblade Burst God Customize set back in 2016, no, 17, I think. 2017. Uh, and it was Arc Bahamut. It had two bump atomic, a very good defense type for its time. However, the only reason it was good is because we only had three Beyblades that spun counterclockwise at the time. So there was not much that could touch it in the meta back then because of the opposite rotation being a big part. Uh, but nowadays, we have more counterclockwise spinning tops. It just feels weird to say it like that. More counterclockwise spinning bays, which is ultimately really good to help the meta be a bit better. 
and healthier, I'd say. Because before they introduced a bunch more, the meta was kind of crazy, to say the least. So I gotta admit, Season 2's meta was pretty fun. Uh, I mean, seriously, a, a controlled attack combos were actually decently relevant. I mean, people were using Ultimate Reboot on Beat Kakulkin. Really one of my favorite combos from the old meta. Okay, and here's our new driver, Moment. Uh, it is a solid ball. It, like, it's not free-moving, just kind of rounded to... And this wiggling, free-spinning guard around it to help with stability, I think. Uh, it's basically like a beefed-up version of the guard driver from Blast Genesis back in Season 2. Uh, so, honestly, it's kind of cool. I don't think it's going to be meta in any way, honestly. But it does look nice. I gotta admit, I love the colors on this new Bahamut. Now to try and assemble this beast. I mean, it's a beast. It's Roar Bahamut, for God's sake. That is, if I can get this to assemble. And then I'll show it in high mode. Oh, I forgot to show Kirbyus in high mode. There we go. Uh, here it is, fully assembled in low mode. Very nice looking. Easily one of my favorite looking uh, days from this generation. I mean, look at that. The way the blue flame kind of looks on its mouth. That is just so sick. Really, really sick. Okay, so as it gets closer to bursting, yeah, it changes shape to be a little more rounded. Pretty neat. I'm not thinking it's gonna get very close to such a thing yet anytime soon. But yeah, that's what changes. And now take it apart and show it in high mode, same with Kirbyus. Oh, and the 10 armor, I gotta admit, the 10 armor, it isn't the best armor, but it's decent, it's pretty decent, I'd say. It's definitely up there to use in the meta if you have no other higher uh, weighted dip. If you don't have heavier armors, 10 is a pretty good substitute. So now time to look at the horrendousness that is high mode. So let's be real, high mode is a joke unless you're using, you know, the L gear on any Belial. Or using the wheel disc. Because I actually discovered recently that uh, Greatest Raphael is super strong if you give it the wheel disc and regular bearing. Yeah, that's right, not bearing dash, bearing with the wheel disc. Although it loses a lot of weight, it's burst resistance and opposite spin matchups. Just super good. I don't know how I figured that out. I was just messing around, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, uh, here it is in high mode. Uh, I'll show you. There's the round mode. Uh, still just as tight in high mode as it is low mode, I'll admit. And now I'll show off Kirbyus in high mode. And then I'll get down to the last, and personally one of my favorites that I purchased, Wind Knight. I know Wind Knight isn't super meta yet, but I'm definitely sure it's going to be up there once people find some better combos. Because currently people are just slapping Raphael stock combo onto it. Okay, so here it is in high mode. Honestly, it looks really cool. Uh, for the top, that is. The top portion looks good, but that gap is just yeesh. <laughs> uh, set these aside. And let's get the stickers off the back of this box before I accidentally throw away all this wrapping with the very important stickers. I say very important. Not sure how important they are, but I like to have them because one day I'm going to resell all these to probably change hobbies at some point. Uh, but right now this hobby is going strong, but if I have all the stickers and the lightly used, lightly, <laughs> used to say the least, uh, then I can probably resell them for a lot more because when I look at the... Uh, old generations, like the plastic series. I mean, 
everybody wants a black Dronzer from back then. That was just the thing. Nowadays, you can find them going from anywhere between two to five hundred dollars. Now imagine how that would be when you're doing the same thing with a gold turbo day, like Cosmo Valkyrie. I have the gold turbo version. Uh, I got a good deal. Uh, you can actually watch my older video on that uh, from a few years ago, a couple years ago, I think. Yeah, uh, reviewing it. The seller ha that gave me this I has a thank you, and I think this is an origami thing inside of it as well. That's neat. I'm going to take a look at that. Oh, yeah, it is. I believe it was supposed to be like an origami bird of some sort, but not sure how well that turned out. Little thank you note. It's really nice. Uh, by the way, the seller that got me the Kerbeus and uh, Knight is tiny.store.japan. Uh, they're actually surprisingly decent seller on eBay. So if you're looking for any of those bays, they're a good seller. Uh, and I honestly don't remember which seller I got Bahamut from, if I'm being honest. But... Uh, still really cool but yeah I'm sure if you just look around on eBay long enough you'll probably find a seller selling any Beyblade for cheaper than average it just takes time to look like it took me a few days to find a $75 seller of Bahamut but once I did it was well worth the wait okay and here it is wind night Oh, upside down. Wind Knight. Oh, it's got little holders inside of it. Huh. Oh, interesting. I believe it's to uh, hold the uh, chip in place. Anyways, let's see if I can figure out how the system on this bay works. Because I know it has a downforce and upper force mode. The mode it's currently in, I believe, is downforce mode, which is where the red is exposed on the blades. Oh, and uh, Knight also has an ability where the teeth wiggle on it, so it kind of has the same ability that uh, Deep Chaos did back in the God Customized set, the same set that had the Bahamut Bay. Kind of neat. Oh, this also has the Six Arm, which is the same as Kirbyus here, but Kirbyus did it first, I think. I don't know. I think. But yeah, basically its ability is the teeth on it kind of move back and forth, apparently which gives it a similar ability to that. Not really sure loose, loose move, like free moving teeth is considered an ability, but Takara told me will say just about anything nowadays. Uh, anyways, let's see, how does this work? Cause there's a system and I'm gonna figure it out. I know there is a system to this. There's gotta be a button or switch of some sort on this thing. Ah. I honestly have no clue how to operate Wing Knight, and I find that absolutely hilarious. tabs that fell out. Let's, I'm gonna actually have to read the instructions, and by read I mean look at the pictures, because I, I don't speak Japanese. I mean, let's be real, how many Beyblade collectors actually speak Japanese? Uh, probably a lot for all I know, but I don't like to think there's too many. layers of packaging. I believe there's like a hole somewhere. Usually these wrappers have holes in them to check. Okay. Got the stickers out. I'm probably going to do like the three main ones and that's it. 
So let's see if I can figure out how to do how to use this thing. Because surely the instructions say something about how to change modes. Gotta be something here I'm missing. Maybe it only works when fully assembled? I don't know. The instructions are not very helpful. This is what I get for not watching a review before opening this. other instruction manual has better because it has two in here maybe this one yep this is the one i'm supposed to read i see pictures of the actual bay finally oh i also forgot to mention this has the uh, bu lock or burst ultimate lock on it which basically means the metal disc rubs little notches on the chip core or the core here uh, what is it called the the I don't even know. Burst core. <laughs> ah, now I see. Now I see. It's a little notch that pulls out. And then this slides. Ah, there we go. So this is downforce mode, and this is upper mode force mode. Uh, downforce mode basically has the airflow push the Beyblade downward for more friction with the stadium because the airflow is pushing it downward. Upper mode does the opposite. It pushes the air in a way that makes Knight have less friction, which I honestly don't think it's all that much of an ability so much as it is just like a little gimmick like to scare people. I mean, I personally think it's a fun little idea they did. I don't think it's anything meta, but I do think it's going to be a fun little thing to throw off somebody new. I mean, let's be real, not many people have seen this bay in action in, well, in my area, that is. Not many have. Well, I'm going to do the three stickers, the three big ones, because that just looks weird without it. And then I'll continue opening the metal disc and tip driver it is as soon as i can get the sticker started the sticker does not want to come off i shall leave that for another day <laughs> and continue before this video gets way longer than it should be uh so it actually includes brand new of just about everything brand new Core, brand new blade, uh, fairly new armor, not like brand new armor from this set only, but the one from Kirbyus, so <laughs> better to have that. I'm sure you heard me sniffling a lot, that's because I'm sick recording this video, uh, I, but the Beyblades arrived earlier than I expected, and uh, the show must go on. Uh, so the moon is the new disc here. Uh, basically, it has these little notches on it somewhere that line up with the, well, flare to add, yeah, yeah, on the inside here, it rubs with these to add extra clip. It's basically an extra lock system. It's also one of two discs, I believe, so far that have that little notch ability. However, I heard it's not as heavy as other uh, other DB or BU discs, so it's not actually very good for the meta, which is sad because it's really round, so I thought it would be. When I first saw it, I personally thought, oh, that's going to be meta-breaking, maybe. But nope, too light. So everybody just throws over bearing dash, or over high extend plus, and just calls it a day, pretty much. And now for the new driver, because this... Oh, crap. 
I accidentally opened it and it just flung across there. The new driver, Bounce, which is basically the keep driver, but this little sharp part has a spring in it like the nothing driver, but only that little part there. That's it. It's not all that special, honestly. I personally think if we had just got like a high eternal recolor in green, it would have been nice since it would also be a callback to the original Air Knight. I thought that would have been much better, honestly, or at least a better new driver. Uh, anyways, let's assemble this thing in low mode. Uh, it actually, it actually feels extra tight, I'm not gonna lie. And the uh, wiggling of the lair thing. I personally don't s Oh, it does wiggle. Oh, that actually is an ability. That's really stupid that that works, and I love that. <laughs> That's a really cool ability this dang thing has. Win Knight is easily one of my new favorites. This is going to be so fun for test battles. I'm probably going to record another be another video later uh, testing out all of these because this one's getting a bit long. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and thank you all for watching.